Today, a look at some riding techniques and innovations that transformed what was and now is possible on a mountain bike. Some are landmark techniques that were, until they were mastered, simply not thought possible on a mountain bike. However, once someone finally did the move, then the floodgates opened. Other techniques have created trends. Some have just become simply fashionable. Some techniques have caused a subtle shift in the generic style that has made riding more versatile and even faster. Let's take a look. First up, the scrub. The scrub has made a huge difference to speed on the trail. Before the emergence of this technique, Racers were having to really brake check obstacles and rollers at high speed, or they ran the risk of getting some serious air. The scrub originates from motocross and was born out of the dynamic racing of indoor supercross events. It allows the rider to squash the energy of the bike through his or her entire body. The rider simultaneously leans the bike over to the side, creating an opportunity for the bike steering to become like an articulation of the side profile of the bike. The rider then seemingly defies gravity as the squashed bike table tops over the obstacle at minimal height compared to the speed that they're going. The name the scrub comes from the bike being so low when done by some practitioners that they literally scrub over the top of the trail feature in question. It looks amazing when it's done properly. Okay, the backflip. Now the backflip is now known to be a pretty simple trick. It is dangerous, yes, and it does take skill and bravery. Once practiced though, it becomes a move that can be used in tons of ways, in tons of places, and with big trick variations. Today that is all known, but back in the 90s it was unclear if a big 26 inch wheel tall framed bike could withstand the forces, and could riders even make the rotation on that much bigger bike. To that point the backflip was very much a BMX staple. However, as riders started to prove it was possible, then the floodgates did open. Uh, and it was a trick that was embraced by many mountain bike riders. Cedric Grazia, a downhill racer, was the first mountain bike rider to backflip in the 2003 Red Bull Rampage. That was when the trick was suddenly open to all mountain bikers, even full suspension bike riders. Until that point, the only mountain bikers really using the flip to full advantage was dirt jump riders on 24 inch wheel dirt jump bikes. Only a few years later and the backflip was being mixed with whips, 360s and no hand variations on some of the biggest obstacles at events like Rampage and on any true slope style riders video showreel. I love the backflip, it's something that everyone wants to see. Bit of a circus trick, but a classic. The Scandi Flick. Now this is a subtle technique development that is almost a signature move for any pro level rider. Being able to pull a stylish and fun filled Scandi flick is a very eye catching move out on the trail that allows for a very dynamic shift in line choice. One moment the rider is taking momentum towards the centre line of the turn only then to allow the rear end of the bike to skid wildly to an even tighter line, creating the rider's approach line to go in the opposite way to what you'd expect. However, this is just a momentary angle within the Scandi flick. At this point, the rider releases that rear end skid and lets the tyre grip, which in turn shifts the weight to the back end to wildly whiplash around the corner, following the line of the front wheel. When done to good effect, this move can offer brand new line choices at very high speed, and it can also look really amazing. Now, the term Scandi flick comes from rallying, and all of these uh, Norwegian and Swedish rallyers using this trick to great effect. It's a well-versed rally move. Hooking the inside of the front wheel of the car to the inner line of the corner, then scrubbing the rear end firstly tight, but then allowing that hooked front wheel to pull Pull the car around the corner in a whiplashing effect. Looks amazing in a car, looks even better on a mountain bike. The whip, another motocross move that is pure style. In fact, entire events are built around trying to find which top rider has the best whip. This technique has almost no other use other than looking great. <laughs> when done properly, it looks like nothing else. The bike seems to turn towards where it has just come from whilst traveling through the air. The more relaxed and effortless the rider can make this happen, and the later that they can leave it to bring it back, the better. 
On a motorcycle, the rider can leave this very, very late, mainly because they're able to apply a big handful of throttle that creates increased centrifugal force on the back wheel, making it pull the bike straight again. Now, a mountain bike rider can't apply that important throttle and get that burst of power to the rear wheel. So the swing of the bike has to be initiated by the rider alone. Now, there are lots of versions of whips. Some riders have such a unique version of the whip that you could start to define it as something else altogether, totally unique. It doesn't really matter. The intention is more important than the definition of a rider's body position or bike movement. A whip is something a rider does. His or her whip is theirs and they own it in the air. But everyone loves a whip, no matter how any rider does it. Shralping. <laughs> it's a, a fashion move of the last five years or so. It's, it's born out of the new wave of riders or crews that spend day upon day sessioning lines at a park or at their local trail. The intention is to be creative on the trail and have fun. This form of riding is a way of a rider expressing their style out in nature, expressing their freedom to use the trail their way. Uh, the crews like the 50 to 1 crew and the Canada Wave crew have become the faces of this movement. However, even though these are pro riders, the entire form of riding is much more similar to what all riders do than what a World Cup racer would do. Um, it's about jibbing out on the trail, finding lines and moves that are not only fun, but look great. Uh, they've got to make good videos and importantly, make each other laugh and have fun. The shrouping of a corner is the epitome of one of these jibbing sessions. Basically, the rider comes into a corner deliberately offline, usually tight to the apex. Then the rider forces the bike onto the desired line of the corner, but with a slightly unweighted rear wheel, causing the rear end to totally lose grip and then grab again once on line. The sound effect of that happening is where the shrouping uh, comes from and it looks absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. It feels great when you do it too. Next up, the drop off. Time travel with me now again to the early 90s. Now the idea of a drop off then would have been extreme at one to two meters in height. Even trials riders who love a drop off weren't regularly going over four meters and that's a very different type of drop. Any true drop for a pro mountain bike at high speed out on the trail was never going to get near that four meter height. That was until people like Josh Bender, Brett Tippy, and other compatriots that started experimenting with what was possible for a full suspension mountain bike. Those riders who in the deserts of the US and the North Shore of Canada pushed the limits of what could be done. They created slope style from their experiments and suddenly long travel bikes started to have longer geometry, slacker head angles. The mountain bike industry now had riders pushing the boundaries and thanks to them, the bike became capable of withstanding these huge drops. Now, you can see riders compete at a slope, slope style event these days and each and every rider will pull tricks off eight meter plus drops, even pull big trips or tricks off that height. The geo of the bikes and the jumps themselves have changed and so has the height. It's absolutely incredible to see what these guys can do. Massive flips, massive drops with tricks within them whilst dropping off something massive. That's a mountain bike drop off. To finish, let's talk racing. The early images of the first mountain bikers is of Gary, Fisher and co drifting their clunkers around hard packed corners in Marin County. They're hitting the turns in a speedway style, one leg off on the inside of the turn, balancing the drift of the rear wheel as they take their bike through that line. To be honest, that's still how most of us react at high speed on a turn. It's a natural reaction to put that leg out uh, and balance what's happening underneath you. There are riders though in downhill and EWS, the very best riders, who at top races can hit corners at high speed, hold the grip and let the front and back wheel together drift through the dirt. Basically balancing the bike between control and, well, oblivion. Uh, people like Martin Mays, Brooke McDonald, Ormre Pierion and Loic Bruni are the new wave of riders who can all drift through turns and their king is the last of the old guard of mountain bike racing, Sam Hill himself, who seems to be able to drift any turn he wants. 
Now, this move is rare, but when you see it done well, at speed, it is incredible. It's quintessentially what we all crave from our mountain bike experience, and the emergence of an ability to truly drift is something many riders will have dialed in years to come. What other moves do you think have shaped this sport? Let us know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to share this video on all your favorite social platforms, and make sure, if you haven't already, to subscribe to GMBN. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time for another awesome video.